So I wanna to talk to you and explain how to breathe really well from your diaphragm and allow the diaphragm to literally dome up and oppose or sort of sit next to the ribs and create an effect that pulls the ribs in naturally versus overusing abdominals and then squeezing the rib cage together, creating a more straightening effect of the ribs and potentially not allowing for a rib flare to curve back in. So we're gonna go over two different types of breaths. On the first breath, what I want you to do is just feel your rib cage. Place your hands, feel all the way down into those lower false ribs and kind of get a sense for what's going on there. Now I'm gonna take my hands and, and really splay them around the rib cage. So the first thing I want you to do is just take two breaths. So you're gonna inhale and just feel those ribs expand out and then exhale and just feel the ribs come in, okay? Now I want you to do that again, inhale, and exhale. Okay, so now we're gonna overactivate those abdominals on purpose so you can see what happens at the rib cage. So right now, if I look at what's considered my infrasternal angle, there you can see the width, okay? Everybody's gonna be a little bit different. I'm all the way at the bottom of the infrasternal angle up by the xiphoid here, okay? So I really have my fingers up high. When I exhale, and I really try to generate tension in the ab, so a, I'm gonna hold that position so you can see how narrow my infrasternal, I can't even get my fingers up to touch my xiphoid because it's so narrow in there versus me very, very slowly and passively exhaling and sort of generating tension over time. And that's gonna allow for all of the ribs to sort of curve in. So I'm gonna place my hands back in my rib cage and I'm even gonna do a shape with my hands, like a wave curving in to get a sense of that happening. So I'm gonna inhale, exhale, So there's a lot more tension through here. And you'll notice my infrasternal angle actually didn't get any more narrow. So my false ribs came in and narrowed, which created a shape change that allowed this to stay wide. So I want you to practice five full breaths with me. You're gonna stand up tall, take an inhale, and exhale slowly out the mouth, making a sighing sound. Uh, imagine those lower ribs curving in here, and then inhale, release that tension. Exhale, allow the ribs to curve in. You should still have space up top. Inhale, allow everything to expand. Exhale, curve it in. Inhale, expand it out. So the diaphragm is flattening as you inhale. On this next exhale, I want you to picture in your mind your diaphragm doming up, opposing all of those, lit, those ribs like an umbrella and allowing those lower ribs to come in. Let's do one more breath together. Inhale, exhale. So when you're going through your breathing, make sure you take these really slow, long sighing exhales if I generate too much tension, I also wanna point this out. <sighs> These lower ribs are still gonna be in a flared position versus if I <sighs> See how I've completely reduced the flare? So 
You can play around with it in, on yourself. You can do it in front of the mirror. You can do it seated. You can do it laying on your back. Sometimes if you have a straighter, more narrow rib cage, laying on your back can be a little bit more challenging, um, but give it a try. Try to go through 10 full breath cycles and that alone should free up a lot of rotational capacity in the thorax and some range of motion at the shoulder.